G'day there guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. Let's go. I just found out my boyfriend's ex is pregnant. So I started talking to a guy in the beginning of July, and we met for the first time about a week later. We hit it off very well, and just vibed from the get-go. We both fell fast and hard. We both have expressed how we have never felt a love this strong before. It honestly has felt like something out of a movie. He has told me that he knows that he's going to marry me one day. We said I love you to each other a few weeks after we started dating because it just felt right. I know it sounds crazy and we both have made comments about how this isn't normal, how fast we've moved along in our relationship, but it just feels right. We made it official at the end of August, but it's now been almost two months of us dating. He just told me last night though that his ex reached out about a week ago and told him that she's pregnant. He thought that it wasn't real and just drama, so wanted to wait until she went to the doctors to confirm. So she finally did go, and she is pregnant. We talked about it, and he was honest that a few days before we met up, he ended up hooking up with her. She's about eight weeks pregnant. I don't know what I should do. I love him and don't want to leave, but I'm also really hurt and don't know how to go about this situation. Any advice would be helpful. In the comments, you've been dating for two months, he's having a baby with someone else, move on. Sometimes relationships that move that fast can crumble just as quickly. She didn't even know he existed more than two months ago. Go back to that. I'm gonna put myself in your shoes and I'm gonna tell you what I would do. I would break things off with him and tell him that unfortunately, things have been great with you guys, but a child just isn't in your future right now. You are only 24, this is not your baby, and I say this because this is going to be an entire crap storm. His ex is not going to want to co-parent with you. She's not going to want you involved in the pregnancy, and I'm not even saying that you would want to be, but it's going to cause a huge rift in your relationship with your boyfriend. He needs to step back from you and figure out what he's going to do with the situation, whether they work out a parenting plan, if he's going to be there for her during the pregnancy, if they're going to try to work it out. He can't do that if he has you next to him. Nine out of 10 men try to work it out with the mother of their children in some way or form, so I think you're setting yourself up for failure if you try to stay with him through this. If in the next year, after the baby is born, they've decided that they're not going to get back together and they're going to co-parent and they're on good terms, then maybe you guys could work something out and try to date again if that's something that you want to do. But at this point in the relationship, I would definitely cut your losses. Check the math on your timeline, because she's either further along than 8 weeks or he hooked up with her later than a few days before you met. You're in the getting to know you, honeymoon stage of your relationship. Maybe it is the case that you're a perfect match, but there's absolutely no way for you to know that yet. No matter how strongly you feel about this guy, you just haven't known him very long at all. And figuring out your long-term compatibility with someone takes, well, time. Give it a chance if you want to, but you don't need to feel like you're making a commitment here, and you definitely should not approach this as a commitment right now. And OP replies, I questioned the timeline too at first. I know they determined it based on the start of your last period. I don't have that information though, obviously, so no way to really know. Um, correct me if I read wrong, but a woman who was eight weeks pregnant had sex six weeks ago, so he was having sex with her while dating you. OP replies, I have honestly been thinking about this all day now. You're correct that the math doesn't add up. So she's either lying about him being the dad, or he's lying about hooking up with her while we were dating. I will bring this up to his attention so he can confirm if it really is his or not. I think a paternity test will need to be done for sure. And now on to the update. Boyfriend broke up with me today. So my boyfriend broke up with me today. I have been dumped many times now, and this one hurts the most mainly because all the other ones I saw coming. This one was straight out of left field though. He just found out that his ex is pregnant with twins and they are his and didn't think that it would be fair to me to drag me along for the craziness of this all. He also was just having a really hard time with all of this and knows that he won't have the time to give me the attention I deserve. 
He said that he hopes it's just a pause for right now, but also knows that I can't just sit and wait, but said who knows what the future holds. My heart hurts. We both love each other very much and agreed if none of this was happening, then we wouldn't be breaking up right now, and that's what sucks about it. We both wanted this to be a forever thing. I don't know how I'm going to move on, or if I will ever be able to. In the comments, he did you a favor, and from your last post, it seems that he was sleeping with his ex while he was love bombing you. You'll be fine. This was the most selfless thing that he could have done for you, and I promise you, a more honest and worthy individual will come along. OP replies, he wasn't sleeping with her while we were together. She ended up being 13 weeks, not eight weeks, and it's twins. He's honest, but he is doing what's best for the both of us right now. Dude should still get a paternity test, but holy F, how dumb can you get? You're desperately trying to win me back, so I'm going to trust you with unprotected sex and am sure that you're going to get plan B, which is totally unreliable anyway. Seriously? I don't know if I'll ever be able to move on after a two month relationship where he repeatedly lied? Oh girl. She said they even talked about having kids and she wanted to be the one to make him a dad within two months? No, no, no. Right? These people barely knew each other. The way OP talks about the relationship, you'd think they'd been together for three years and were living together. It's a big red flag on both of their parts that they were both so eager to say I love you to a near stranger. I'm a married elder millennial, but back in my day, you would maybe have just gone exclusive with someone you'd been dating for a few weeks like this, if that. The speed of this intense attachment is bizarre. Lord almighty, this girl is naive as heck. Also saying that her fairy tale was ruined because she wasn't going to be the one making him a dad? Girl, it was two months. Also, he was having unprotected sex just before and likely during their end of summer fling, so she may want to get tested. Our next post is titled, I ghosted my family and fiance after what my sister did. I need a little advice on the matter as I don't know what to do anymore. I was 21 when my fiance asked me to marry him. He was the absolute light of my life. We had known each other since preschool, our families are very close. He would come and have dinner with us on a daily basis and vice versa. He doesn't have any siblings, but I have two older sisters, which is very important as he was also very close with them. We grew up together and when we started dating, I don't think our parents stopped celebrating for weeks. He helped me deal with a lot of my anxiety, and even when I gained a little bit of weight and my mother berated me saying that he was going to leave me, he told her off and he said he loved me for who I was, not for what I looked like, even though he claimed that I was the most beautiful girl in the world to him. We were only engaged for six months before the incident. My middle oldest sister, let's call her Nikki, was a very cold person. She never showed any affection, she only ever opened up to my fiance as she said that she saw him as a brother and he also helped her through a lot of her dark times, such as battling drug addictions and breaking the law. She and I never saw eye to eye. I loved her dearly because she was my sister, but I didn't like her as a person. Out of the blue, she tells me she wants to take me clubbing as we had never been together before and she felt bad that she was so distant to me. I agreed and that night we went out. Clubbing wasn't really my style, but once I had a few drinks, I loosened up a little and began having fun. The night was going smoothly until Nikki spotted a guy across the room who she claimed she wanted to climb like a tree. So she walked over to him and within a few minutes she was back and she had a sour expression on her face. I asked her what was up, but she never said anything. I kept pressing because I didn't want our night to be ruined. She then told me the guy didn't want her number, but he wanted mine instead. I told her that he was a loser and there were plenty of guys around who would kill to be with a girl like her. She didn't budge though. She told me she needed to use the restroom and then we would leave. I waited for over an hour. During this time, I was sipping on a lot of different cocktails. I then started feeling really dizzy and lightheaded. I figured I'd just cab it home as I was certain that Nikki had left. 
On the way out though, I bumped into a friend of Nikki's whom she had briefly dated. He asked me if I needed a hand to my car, and I explained that I was getting a cab. He said he was getting ready to leave so we could share one. I told him okay, and we walked out of the club together and into the first cab that we saw. I tried to find my phone in my purse, but I felt myself getting dizzier and dizzier. I don't remember what happened next, as I blacked out, and the next morning, I woke up on a hard sofa, my head pounding. When I came to, I realized I was in Nikki's friend's house, and my phone was sitting on the glass table in front of me, but it was flat. When he noticed I was awake, he offered me some tablets and water, and explained that I had passed out in the cab, and he didn't remember my parents' address, so he just picked me up and took me back here, where he laid me on the sofa. I told him that I needed to go home, as my fiancé would be worried. So he called a cab and I left. When I arrived at my parents' house, my mother, father, Nikki, my fiancé, and his parents were all standing in the living room. I thought they were worried about me, but the instant I opened my mouth, my fiancé asked how could I do this to him. I tried to explain that my phone went flat, but he then went on screaming about how could I cheat on him. I was baffled. Why would he think that? I tried to explain the night's events, but I kept getting cut off. Nikki then chimed in and said that I was a lying sla la la, and how could I be so heartless to a man who has been there for me through thick and thin? She went on to say that I kept flirting with random guys all night, and then when she went to the bathroom, she saw me leave with her friend. I told her what had happened, and she showed me photos on her phone where, as we were leaving, his hand was on my back, ushering me outside. Yes, the photo did look horrible, and I was so drunk I didn't even realize his hand was on my back at all. My fiancé was so angry. He kept shouting, and his mum and mine were both crying. I then asked Nikki to call her friend, and he would confirm that nothing happened, but when she called him, he told a completely different story. He said that I begged him to take me back to his, and when we did, we slept together multiple times. I saw Red and started crying and yelling at Nikki because I knew she had organized this whole thing to make me look bad. I begged my fiancé to believe me, but he just shook his head and left. When everyone had cleared out, my mother slapped me across the face and told me to get out. I left and went to a friend's house where I stayed for a few nights. During those nights, I called my fiancé crying and pleading with him to believe me that nothing happened. But it all fell on deaf ears, as he never returned any of my calls or texts. My mom texted me and told me she was kicking me out, and that she couldn't believe that I would do such a thing, and a lot of hurtful other slurs that I don't think I could repeat here. She didn't even give me time to get my things, as she threw everything out. I was now homeless. None of my family would take me in, as they chose my fiancé and mother's side. I was homeless and single in less than a day and a half. My entire world had been taken away because of Nikki's lies. Now for weeks, I tried everything to get my fiancé back and my family. The limit for me though was when Christmas time had come and I went over to my mother's house to try and reconcile. I was sleeping from couch to couch during this time. When I got to my parents' house, I knocked on the door but no one answered. My friend then called me and told me she just saw on Facebook that my family were in another state celebrating Christmas and they had posted pictures online. Everyone was there. My sisters, parents, grandparents, and even my fiancé and his family. When I myself saw the photos, I couldn't stop crying as they all looked so happy. I cried for days and days before deciding to block them all. I even returned my engagement ring. My friend knew someone a couple of hours away who was looking for some help in his restaurant, and he even had living arrangements above where he worked, so I could get rent at a cheap price and work at the same time. I wanted to start over with my life, as it hurt me that no one took my side, and they all left me to fend for myself. I was able to move pretty quickly and was doing well. The apartment was tiny, and I had to work 10 plus hours almost every day, but I was able to save a lot of money. I'm not living in the apartment anymore. I was able to rent a much nicer condo, but I'm still working at the restaurant as assistant manager. Now it's been roughly two years since I left and have not spoken to anyone of my family. I have no idea what's going on with them until I got a knock on my door. 
It was my ex fiance. I was shocked to say the least. All these feelings came rushing back, and all I wanted to do was jump into his arms. But then I remembered the pain that I had felt, and I tried to slam the door in his face. But he stopped it and asked that I let him explain. He said that Nikki had gotten married and she had confessed that she lied about the situation because she had found someone she loved so much and realized what a horrible thing she had done. I asked him how he found me and he said my friend told him. My entire family had been trying to get in touch with me and want to see me. So I told him that I needed time to see if I ever wanted to have them in my life again. He then left and I have been a mess ever since. I don't know what to do. I know I'll never forgive Nikki. She could rot for all I care, but it's hard because my other family and fiance didn't know she was lying, but I also felt like they abandoned me too quickly without letting me explain my side. I don't know if I should forgive them. Any advice would be very much helpful. Thank you for taking the time to read. In the comments, Frankly, I do not think I could forgive your ex-fiance or your family for abandoning you so quickly based on an incident that didn't even occur. It's all well and good for them to be sorry, but they didn't have to completely reinvent themselves on their own the way you did. I wouldn't be quick to forgive or forget. The fiance is the only one that I can kind of understand, but not too much. With what he had been shown, it would look like she had cheated, and at least for me, that's an instant end. The part that makes him iffy is how he wouldn't try to hear her out, but that's still because the sister was cutting her off anyways. You deserve an amazing life, and you need to think carefully about the family and fiance who dropped you so quickly. Plus, your sister is a psychopath, and that's me being polite. She put you in such a position of danger for her own gain and destroyed your life. I can't believe also, given her past, that your parents would side with her on this. I was thinking this too. If her sister has a track record of breaking the law and illicit drug use, why would they all believe her so easily? And if anything, her ex-fiance and her have known each other since they were children. You would think the people involved would know each other's characters better than this. I'm Petty AF, and I would request a meeting with a family and sister's husband, and in front of him, I would tell him how she drugged you and gave you to a stranger to do whatever while you were drugged. How even after making you homeless, jobless, supportless, she still let that go on for years and enjoyed Christmas while not knowing if you were in a ditch somewhere. Blow up her life. Also, you don't owe them anything. They are all horrible people. This. What if a complete stranger took OP home instead? What if Nikki's friend did do something to OP? Nikki put her sister in a life-threatening situation because she was jealous of the love OP had in her life. That is a heartless thing to do to anyone, but especially your sister. Nikki is an awful, horrible human being, and she should be the one that's getting kicked out of the house, having to fend for herself right now. My family did something similar, and I ghosted them. I was in denial about how bad it was for a while, and had thought there might be a way to make a relationship with some of them work. I realize now that it's just not worth the risk. And now, on to the update. Wow, guys. I don't even know where to begin. I am honestly so grateful for all the support, advice, beautiful messages, and awards that you guys have gifted. I wish I could personally thank each and every one of you, and I did try my best to reply to every message. You guys are honestly so amazing, and I cried reading all the comments. My heart has never been so touched with the amount of love and support that I got on this post, and I am so sorry if it took too long to post an update. I was honestly in so much shock that I didn't know how to cope with it. So, um, I never got back to my ex. I didn't know what to do, but eventually, he must have given my phone number to my parents as they texted asking to meet up. I never replied and was planning on organizing a Zoom meeting, but didn't need to as they also showed up at my door. Well, my father did. When I answered the door and saw him standing there, I ended up throwing up, which he insisted on cleaning. When he was done, we sat down and I just burst into tears. My emotions were all over the place. And my father has worn the same cologne for a really long time, so when I smelt it, it just brought back all these memories. 
He tried to hug me, but I pushed him away and asked what he was doing here. He went on to explain that he and my mother are getting a divorce. He said he begged my mother to get in touch with me the minute I left, but she refused and said that I was acting like a baby and if I wanted to leave them after doing something so horrible, that I could do things on my own from then on. I asked him how long did it take for them to notice that I was gone. He said they arrived back home after New Year's Eve and were planning on inviting me over so we could talk. That's when they got in touch with my friend and she told them I left and she didn't know where I was. I asked him why didn't he listen to my side of the story and why did they throw me away so easily. He just started crying. He said he never meant for things to get so out of hand and he wishes more than anything that he could take it all back. I said when they found out Nikki was taking drugs and had dropped out of high school, they didn't throw her away. Instead, we all went on a holiday so she could focus on things besides drugs, and during that trip, she got hooked on alcohol, and each time, they defended her over and over. He said he had no idea my mother was going to kick me out. He thought that it was going to be for a few days, but then they decided last minute to spend Christmas out of state. My mother apparently promised him that I would be allowed back home after they got back. I said she threw away all my stuff, but he said everything was still there and she lied about that. I asked him what happened to Nikki, and he said that she is dead to him. He wants nothing to do with her, but my mother has been crying to him, asking to forgive Nikki, as she is not well, and they had already lost one daughter, they cannot lose two. He then blocked my mother and Nikki, and has been on my ex's case about finding me. My ex caved in when my dad said he blocked my mother and Nikki and told him where I lived. I asked that he never show up again unless I give him permission, and he agreed. He asked what would happen now, and I said I really don't know, and that he hurt me really bad. I then just went into denial about how much he hurt me and what it felt like seeing them so happy without me and how hard it has been. We were both crying by the end of it, but I was really glad that I got it all out. It felt like a huge weight had been lifted off my shoulders. My dad then said that he knew a few places around the area and would help me get a better apartment, and he said that he would help get a better job, but I told him that I wouldn't be leaving this job, as my boss helped me out so much, and I wanted to repay him at all costs. I said that I didn't want him to do anything for me, but I said I do want to reconcile, but it has to be on my own terms, and it's going to take a very, very long time to trust him again, and I may never trust him again. He said he would do anything to make up for what he did. So I asked him why Nikki did this, and if she said anything about it. Well, she said she thought that my ex deserved better than me, and she wanted to see him happy because he was making too many sacrifices in the relationship. She loved him like a brother, and she wanted to break the engagement off. So that night, she asked her friends to come and escort me out of the club so she could get photos and to take me home so that her plan could work. She said that nothing sexual happened. I went to sleep on the sofa, and that was it. He was up playing video games all night until I woke up, which he has proof of, apparently. My dad was planning on getting my stuff from my mother's house and bringing it to me, but I told him that I didn't want those things anymore. I then went to ask about Nikki's husband, and he said that my mother has been hush-hush with the entire situation, but he had his number and wrote it down for me. So, after my dad left, I decided to call Nikki's husband. I was sweating the entire time, and I felt so sick. What if I could hear her in the background? Well, anyway, when he picked up, I just spit everything out, which I deeply regret because I should have eased into it for him. He sounded really confused, and I explained the entire situation again. I even went into detail about her drug and alcohol problems. I was honestly expecting him to curse me out and defend Nikki, but instead, he let out a long sigh. And well, turns out, he had a feeling she wasn't exactly innocent. It turns out her and his sister have been having problems, and she's been spouting non-stop lies about his sister, and has caused a huge rift between them. His sister didn't even attend their wedding. I told him I was sorry, but he should make things right with his sister, because Nikki was the problem, not her. We spoke a little more, and then he hung up. 
I'm not entirely sure what he's going to do with that information. I hope that he cuts his losses and leaves her because he sounded like a really nice person, and even he had lost his own sister because of Nikki. So I have decided to reconcile with my dad. My mother has always run the show their entire marriage, so the fact that he's putting his foot down and divorcing her and going no contact with Nikki shows he's serious about wanting to make amends. I don't think I will ever reconcile with my mother. As she thinks that Nikki is a victim also, in all of this, and at this point, I don't care to listen to her excuses. If she reaches out and we talk, I will update the post again. For my ex, I haven't had the time to meet with him and talk, though my dad mentioned that he wanted to come with my dad, but he told him that I would be too overwhelmed if both were there, and seeing them separated will help make clear decisions. He also mentioned my ex was arrested for assaulting Nikki's friend, who had lied about the entire situation. He was being charged, but the charges were dropped a few days later. I will update the post again when I have time to speak to my ex. Thank you guys for being so patient and so caring and just amazing. In the comments, so this means that your sister literally drugged you just to break your relationship up? The way that you were passing out at a club isn't normal. What about your other sister? Just because he deserved better? As if Nikki as a friend would have been good to start. Having a scheming, liar, drug addict, being able to do anything to ruin someone else's life as a friend isn't better than willingly having to make sacrifices in a relationship. I wanna know when Nikki made moves on him, because that's the real reason she did this, to get him for herself. That was my original thought as well, because why would she do such a horrible thing if not to get a man for herself? You know, the man who always helped Nikki as well. Nikki is a terrible hypocrite because she wanted the fiance to find someone better, yet she herself was using his kindness too. But I really don't understand Nikki's husband. Like she and his sister were fighting. Didn't he notice that something was off? I'm glad your dad got in contact with you, but just take it slow. It was still a big betrayal. He could have tried finding you sooner, etc. But better late than never. I hope you two build on your relationship. I understand the ex's reaction and pain, but just see what stage you are both in life now. Has he moved on? Does he have a girlfriend? Just talk everything out about how you felt and are feeling, etc. Just proceed with caution. I hope you do overcome this, but just be careful. Honestly, cut contact with the mum and sister. Never ever let them back in your life. Just the fact that they abandoned you. Fair enough if they chewed you out, but they genuinely practically left you for dead, no support, no nothing. Don't let them back in your life. It was the worst thing they have ever done. I'm still bitter towards the rest of your family too. The fact they never found you, or the fact they went away for Christmas, personally, I couldn't get over it. I wish you all the best. Nikki is the effing worst. Who drugs their sister and leaves them with some dude? then does it to steal her fiancé whom she gets bored of to glom on to some other poor sucker. F Nikki, F their mother, and this is almost as much as the mother's fault. And I wouldn't be surprised if the mother was actually a knowing participant in Nikki's scheme. Everyone wants to be loved by their parents, so I understand why OP wants to have a relationship with her dad. After clawing my way back to some kind of life, I would have still said my goodbyes to dad. I think there's some things that you can't have back, but everyone is different. If OP thinks it'll be different this time, then I hope it works out. And that's where I'm going to end today's episode, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know what you thought about it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.